Have we played this game before with the tin? That's what I thought. I was pretty sure we played played this game before with the tin. I'm not gonna swear. I, okay, so the rocket stove is in. It's humming like a like a charm. Like a hummingbird. Like a hummingbird. <laughs> it's wonderful. It works like a rocket stove. It is. It's wonderful. The outside is cool. So if you have small children, if you have toddlers around. Um, you might want to attach it to the floor so that it, if it did get bumped in too hard you didn't have problems with that but as far as like worrying that you're gonna have little kids that are gonna this part we do hot. have a shield that goes around it and pea gravel that goes in so that this part also does not get hot but you wouldn't want the kids to touch this part um, but the hottest part is just right there on the top uh, our heat flow our fan is going right now to move the heat through the cabin it's at 550 degrees. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. So Darwin made this. He used Aircrete, which if you don't know what Aircrete is, it is adding foam to concrete and mixing it in so that it's an aerated, aerated concrete. If you haven't seen Aircrete, you need to go check out the it's channel. It's a great insulator. It's a lightweight concrete. And I used it for the chimney. That was the missing element before. To be honest with you, as well as that chimney sucks, it probably would have worked yeah. <laughs> without reducing without the, fixing it. But but, but, it, but I wanted to reduce yeah. it because we were just it it was too big of a yeah. heat chamber. It was burning you out. For the first week the Rocket Mass heater worked well. At one point I had some paper that I had put in as a fire starter that got sucked up the J tube and it ended, up in, it ended up causing problems. Okay guys, so we've had a week with the rocket stove, the rocket mass heater, you can see, I don't know, maybe they can see, there is a mass in it now. And now we're going to do a little bit of exploratory surgery. Yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and we're gonna do an autopsy on it and take it apart and see what went on inside. We've been collecting a special concoction underneath that pipe. So Darwin thinks that because it's a single wall pipe, it's just tin, that what's happening is is that it's cooling too much as it comes out. Yeah, I, I believe that the, well, the air forcing up the insulated riser is creating a positive pressure in here. Hot air doesn't want to go down, but it, because of the positive pressure, it forces it down. And then by the time it gets over here, because there's no insulation here, none on this, and it's cold outside, and the mass is absorbing all the energy of the heat, it doesn't get really hot. The cold air outside wants to push down and the warm air up in here wants to create a positive pressure in here and it just kind of fights against each other. So this has got to be, we got to insulate this, I think, going up. And so he, there's a system that goes with this. If you don't use it right, it's not going to work. But it's not a complicated system. You it just isn't. need to be shown how to do it. Yeah. And um, the especially the stovepipe is not complicated because you don't really have to treat it at all it right. doesn't get hot enough but it saves you hundreds you know? and hundreds of dollars if you right. have a long rise that you need for your chimney um it did not work before he put the insulated chimney in and we tried using other kinds of insulation in the in the chimney first and they melted they didn't work but the air creep is like magic it is so make sure to go check out their channel the honeydew carpenter you're going to see a lot of them here for the next little bit and you will not be sorry to actually but you need to go subscribe don't just watch them on my channel if you want to know actually how to do these things you have to go watch them on their channel none of those how-to videos are going to be here we're going to showcase how it works but i'm not going to teach you how to do it because he's the man and melanie his beautiful wife does all the editing and she brings in lovely treats to him and you've never seen a cuter family channel than their channel um it's the honeydew carpenter on uh, is their etsy store if you want their pdfs and uh, make sure to go check them out and um, we'll talk to you later. Okay, all right. Oh.
reason I'm not setting this right on top the mantle this time is I just want it to be that two and a half inches lower. That's just two and a half inches. It doesn't have to be forced down to go through the bench. This was a piece of a water tank. This was a piece of an air tank. And I did a video where I pounded it and made it smaller circle. It was actually a piece of this, which was an old air tank. This was an old hot water tank. <laughs> uh, the stainless steel sleeve here. And an old saw blade. And yeah, there's an old saw blade on the bottom side of here. And I have videos kind of showcasing the whole build and everything on it. Plus the window insert. You just did the window insert yeah. in the video. Yeah, this is the Aircrete insulated window insert going out and all the way up. And I added three feet to it. When I redid your um, burn chamber and did test burns at my house, I put, I put this on and I put the downdraft shroud over the heat riser and I just ran a normal stove pipe up. And I mean, it would be like 300 degrees right where it came out of the downdraft. And by the time you got up two feet, it'd be 200. Wow. Then 100. And by the time it was at the top, it was less than 90. I mean, it. Crazy. So, as before when we had this set up, as soon as it went into the window, we just had a piece of this on the window, right? As soon as it even got close, once it got outside, it just lost all its heat had no draw and this whole insulated chimney system that I put in is what I call my heat vacuum. <laughs> and what did you insulate it with? Aircrete. Um, I made it with a foam mate, a small scale foam generation device that I uh, invented and Man, that thing works great. How much is one uh, foot pipe We pipe? saw a four foot section. Of, I made it in three foot sections, but a four foot section was $145. For one section of pipe? For one section of pipe. If you get it on Amazon online, it'll be around 90 bucks for a three foot section. And so how many feet did you do and about how much do you think it cost you total for that whole chimney? Well, the inner pipe and the outer pipe those would be about six bucks a piece. So you had twelve dollars in uh, stove pipe for each three foot section. And then uh, uh, just a couple, maybe a dollar for the the air creek. For the air creek to pour it in. I mean Portland cement's cheap. Yeah. Right? So that's brilliant, and it's pretty too. The, I I can show I can put up clips here of what it used to look like when it was just a piece of tin in the window, and we had problems with water, nasty tar water, coming back down in and dripping because it was uh, we had condensation coming down from the cold chimney. But I haven't had anything like that burning the little stove the last couple of days. And the test burns that we did on this, like uh, you could put your hand up here and everything, and no heat was anywhere. Escaping. I mean, the pipe was hot, yeah, but none of this was having any heat at all. So you could put stuff up here and you wouldn't even have to worry about it. Right, which is amazing. All I'm doing now is uh, making sure that this is in the right spot. Okay, it has to be right like that. The reason I know is because I marked. I don't want that coming straight out the side. Okay. That's just, basically I put a mixture of sand and Portland cement and I just pat it down in there to seal it. Uh -huh. And what happens is when, you know how when the wood gets hot, some of it's moisture. Right. It just soaks in and just kind of gets a little bit hard and creates a seal. Okay. That's all you need. Cool. Okay, Julie, yes, I w I'm going to get another sphere. Oh, it looks like, so pretty. I'm going to get another one that's this size for it to sit over. Okay. But until then, this is... I cool. like it though. Oh. I think that looks awesome. <laughs> A little mushroom on yeah, top. Yeah, a little mushroom. It looks more like a and train every day. This is right. a machined uh -huh. pipe, That's meaning awesome. it's a it's a perfect circle around. Okay. So when you put that on, it's 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 snug. sealed. It's not just sitting there. It looks awesome. Okay, then I won't get another one. Yeah, I like one. it. I really like it. Get me another one. <laughs> Dang it! Do you need it for something no. else? No. Uh -uh. Yeah.
I think I got lucky. It looks like those are winding up. Your heat riser weighs about 12 pounds. Oh. That's awesome. So it's aircrete, but I took and um, completely saturated the aircrete after it cured out with uh, water glass. And then I put it on and burned it, and boy, it stunk like water glass for a little <laughs> while until it burned out. It took it took a while for it to. And what, are you, what did you guys call the series when you're putting together the insulated chimney and everything, and the and the heat riser? What did you call the series? The uh, uh, building a a rocket mass heat riser. I'll make sure to put the links in, guys. Make Something. sure to go check it out on okay. their channel because I don't have this content on my channel. <laughs> so this is the heat riser. It's going off. Well, it's in different series. So this was one video, and that was a different video. So you got all sorts of yeah. Well, I got. Things. We have the whole build of it, and we build it really kind of similar to the way we built the insulated stove pipe, except for in the center, instead of using the actual pipe, I used fabric. Um, steel fabric so it was perforated. The reason I did that was um, I wanted to be able to treat the air crew and soak water glass into it and then put a Portland cement coating in it. I'm telling you that Portland cement coating that I came up with it, it's still the same coating on that throat in there and I've had that sucker 2000 degrees it works so dang good it's incredible. So how brittle is the air creek? Because the first batches that you made, there were some that seemed to be kind of brittle and, and soft. The stuff with perlite was kind of brittle and soft. Have you found that as you've as you've played with it more, you found some mixes that had some different characteristics? I have. I need to do take some of my test blocks and do some uh, just some demonstrations on how they are. Aircrete is inherently a little bit brittle. Concrete is brittle, period. That's why they put rebar in it. That's why they put rocks in it to hold it together. And aircrete is no different. But when it sets up, like the very first batch I ever made in the very first video I ever made, I thought it was junk because two days later I was able to crumble it and I threw it out behind my shed it sat over the winter, got snowed on, rained on, everything. I went and picked it up. Those pieces are so hard. It is crazy. Basically, um, and I need to do a video where I do a demonstration of it, but it's like gypsum, you know, which they make sheetrock with. It's super brittle. Uh, if it didn't have the paper laminated on the outside, it wouldn't even hold together, you know. You scratch that paper and, and tap it and it just falls apart. Um, I that's kinda I came up with this idea because I used the fabric webbing, the steel fabric webbing in the uh, center of this heat riser. And I sourced some great big rolls of just fabric, steel fabric webbing. And I'm gonna do some blocks and whatnot and put that as reinforcement skin on the outside and it I I just know it is gonna be crazy strong. So this is from the exact bath that I poured your window insert with this and I don't know can you see all the and here I just took a screwdriver and scraped the skin off the top and you can see all that but I mean it's super hard I could jump on it and it's not gonna break or anything Yeah. 
you kind of seen the inside of this? I haven't. I haven't seen it yet. I'm not getting a very good shot of the inside right now. Oh, it's got a grate. Yep. <laughs> so. All at one time? Yeah. It's just oh. a handful. Let's see if I can break some of this smaller stuff up. There's some there that's kind of paper thin. I know, that's the awesome stuff. So what are the changes you made to it? I see a million changes, but for those who haven't been here as long, okay. what changes? <clears throat> I reduced the size of the burn chamber. It was this whole 12 inch thing. And given the fact that I only have a three inch portal going out with a four inch riser, it was way too much area. Before it ever started vortexing or working back here in the vortex and the vortex is an area where once the heat starts going up the heat riser and it gets hot enough in the gasification chamber that any um, Gases because of lack of oxygen on this end that don't get burned will get burned in here and go up the heat riser, but uh, Just reducing that size and you filled it with aircrete. And I filled it with aircrete to insulate it. So this stays cold a long, long time. And by the time it gets warm, this thing stays hot for like eight hours after the fire's out. And it keeps it, if you'd filled it with concrete though, it'd be heavy now, which it's not. Oh it's yeah, I can lift it myself. No. But, but look at that. Oh, here, watch the. And, and listen to the sound, watch. Um, put your camera so it's shooting right in there, Whoa, watch. Okay. That's awesome. You hear the, yeah. you hear the suction? Completely different dynamic than before. Oh, huge. This is, this is as good or better than the Yukon stove. 2.0, it's Aircrete Rocket Mass Heater Did you hear it just take off and start cracking, just like immediately? It did. It's a huge difference. And see, I pull this, and it slows down, but. That's awesome. I guess what? <laughs> I'll, I'll shut this and then open that up. A little smoke did come out there. Well, I shouldn't do that. There we go. The reason that did that was because I sh the flame went totally out. Okay. <laughs> because I didn't have this open. No. So don't shut that unless you have this open. Cause that, what that'll do is allow air to still continue going through. And, and so this area right here won't fill with smoke. Right. And I had this shut when I shut that and I shouldn't have. But once this really gets roaring, you can open the top one and let it really get roaring. <laughs> You don't, you don't have to let it burn like that. But, oh my gosh, that chimney works so freaking good. So that, exciting. That is crazy. And after we get this going and let it burn for a while, what I'm gonna do is get some heat. Um, I'm gonna get some temp from the top, down this, uh, up the um, chimney, right to where it hits the window. And then I'm gonna get on a ladder and I'm gonna climb up to the top and take a heat reading at the top and see how much heat it loses from the window elbow on up. But we need to let the chimney get warmed up before we do that. Because we want to see how much heat it loses once everything is going. So now it's, the fire is going and it's roaring really good, but the system isn't even heated up. The, the, um, aircrete in the heat chamber that's got this thick insulation all around it it's absorbing a lot of the heat energy right now so it's not even I mean it's getting a little warm but it's 
I can still touch the downdraft. I couldn't touch it up here where it comes out of the heat riser. It's it's hot. And last time it got cherry red. But once everything gets heated up and going, uh, we'll do some temperature readings. I. Yeah, it's probably, I'm guessing, 160, 130 degrees right here where it's going out. But what's incredible is the chimney is uh, pulling so hard right now. Your double wall chimney works amazing, darling. It, it was the missing element. It was the absolute missing element. Now, seeing this, Julie, and seeing how it's... I mean, you look in there right now and see it. It's about sucking the flames right off the wood. It's crazy. I think what's cool is the way that the door gets sucked in. Yeah, it, it holds it. Um, uh, you, you have to pull it yourself. out. <laughs> the vacuum sucks it in. Yeah, which so, is awesome. Did we send her a clip of me when I was designing it saying huh. that's how it's going to work? I don't think so. Oh. <laughs> I, 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 I told videos, Melody, I said, this door will just kind of hang there, and when it starts roaring, it'll suck it in. <laughs> so does it even need this one? Is this more of a safety, like if something back... back, uh, back? It doesn't need it except for the damper. There's no way to control this airflow here. Now you can shut this, and you can control the air. Uh, the other night when I was running it, mm -hmm. after it gets completely heated up and really roaring, I had to shut this down to just a sliver. I mean, and it really does shut it down. Like, yeah, did you, you hear it? Just yeah, and I back before you even fixed it. If you shut that down, it dies. It just it, yeah. there's no worry about air fire getting out of control. You shut the air down, and it's dead. Right. And now, I literally, it's about sucking them flames right off the wood. It sounds so good. Doesn't that sound like rocket snow it's now? It's so cool, and it's nice and warm. Isn't that better? Right, right here now. Melanie might not die now. I fixed it. You I fixed, fixed it, it, Julie. You fixed right. it. I fixed it. <laughs> Look at the smile on Julie's face. I She's am happy so too. Hopefully, I don't freeze now, huh? Yeah. Ho well, it was getting cold. I was but cold in here too. It was remember how hot it would get before mm -hmm. we ever got it working? Yeah. It's working right now, and this is so cold from being outside last night. It's still ice cold right here. So how excited you are you about your future Aircrete project, seeing how well that worked for this project? Well, um, I'm over the moon. I really am. Because I'm going to do a bunch of little projects and just kind of segue them up and just let people know that, hey, this isn't complicated stuff. You get your, your foam mate. You learn how to use it and do some small projects and then I'm going to move on and I'm going to build a geodesic dome. So how much does it cost? I know you have PDFs on your Etsy store and you, also, you have some pre-made foam mates. So on our Etsy store for $21.95 we have a PDF which is a complete instructional PDF with instructions how to put a foam mate together and uh, it has a bill of materials or a bill of lading on it. With every individual piece that you'll need to go get and so that's for DIY people who are really handy and just want to do it themselves that's great um, also I build them for people and send them out all over the world I've sent them to Sweden France Switzerland <laughs> and Alaska and Hawaii and all over the place but uh, I send them out to people and I charge $125, which is a screaming good deal um, because by the time you get all the parts, depending on where you're at, I source them in bulk and it still costs me about 30 bucks to make one, $35, and it takes me some time as well. So, um, But that's a really screaming good deal for $125, I'll send one out to you. Yeah, and we have, what are the projects we have coming up? Um, we're going to do a raised planting bed um, and the molds and the bricks I'm going to use and how they lock together is I think going to be something that you're going to be excited about. Julie. I will be excited. Yeah. It's that time of year. And uh, then... Oh, we can't talk about some I'm not going to talk about <laughs> some of them. Some of them are, are just too shock value big it's going to be really cool but for people who like off-grid and they want to live off-grid and they want to live off-grid in comfort yeah 
I'm this, getting in your life, so. Um, Don't you all just wish that Darwin lived next to you and you had an off-grid cabin for him to experiment on? <laughs> I love her cabin. So, like, like this, like, watch. That's now awesome. It's, now it's roaring. So I could shut this down completely. Well, I don't like to do that now. Yeah, don't shut it because down. Because the air to heat up. going in on the bottom. And you could feed in, you know, small sticks through the top if you wanted. We'll just let that them That is burn. so still cold. Yeah, it's super cold. How am I supposed to get warm if it's cold? Yeah, this so, is even cold still. So oh, this is heating up. But remember how you just got roasted out? Oh, it was miserable. This it was is miserable. But this is just heating up nice and warm. It'll it'll warm those deals. There's a good radiant heat coming off of here. Where's your? Ooh. Yeah, careful, Mel. Do not bring yourself. There's a good radiant. Oh, I forgot heat. that's where we put that last time. What do you think the likelihood is is that this is going to work in the bench? Because we tried it in the bench before and there wasn't enough draft with the single wall uh, chimney. Uh, from a straight cold start, meaning this thing set out in almost freezing temperatures last night. Um, from a straight cold start and it was just sucking the, the flames right off the sticks right out of the get-go. I think that that insulated stove pipe is going to suck this. Uh, what I'm going to do is put a valve here. And then the valve, once the stove and the chimney all get hot and it starts its vacuum, because once that chimney gets warm and hot, it it's going to be a vacuum. That's all there is to it. I call it my hot air vacuum. And everything that you've made is reclaimed. So is the vent going to be something you're making on your own? the heat uh, redirect heat port it is yeah the valve um, it will it'll be kind of a box and you'll have a, a valve on it and as soon as um, you start it it's just going to go directly out it's going to go directly out but then once it, everything gets warmed up you can open it part way so that a lot of the direct heat continues to go directly out but it creates a vacuum and a negative pressure to force air through the bench and once the bench gets a little bit warm you can open it totally and send the whole thing totally through the bench so that's going to be on your channel here in the next probably the next day after people see this one they'll see the valve and that's the next video we'll do yeah. so but guys if you yeah. want to see him build the valve you have to go to his channel to watch it if you want to see how the chimney was made so what is your channel uh honeydew carpenter honeydew carpenter um my wife and her friend julie dubbed me the honeydew carpenter <laughs> and it's pretty catchy it's like sucking the flames right that off that looks there. so cool that's that's an awesome thumbnail you see? How hot is that? And there's no heat. It's, no, it's sucking it's all the sucking heat down it. and in. True. Yeah. That's awesome. Isn't it awesome? So you can use this as a feeder for small stuff. I I just don't want to call it a feeder because it's only a three inch hole. Okay. Where's your little um, fence thing that went in for the pillar? I haven't perfected it. Oh. It. Never what mind. happened was I made a pellet insert. And it allowed too many pellets into the area. I'm going to have to make one that just is inside a fabric, uh, a steel fabric deal, but only allows about an inch thick of pellets. And then they'll feed down, but they don't burn efficiently if you don't have the right oxygen and air mixture. Okay. And, but this, I mean, it'll work. I'll it'll get, get there. If you want a pellet. It will. I don't know if you want to burn pellets or not, but... They... Well, I think it, many people would be very interested in it because I've seen a lot of rocket mass heaters where they've designed a pellet feeder, but then the wire cloth melts or something else. Right. But I have seen some that have been successful, and it's brilliant because you can just yeah. let it go at night, and it continues to feed if you have a really cold night. Yeah. Can you smell it? It's starting to smell. Well, I am smelling a little bit. It's probably the tape, the glue in the tape. But before it turns hard, it'll... Yeah. If it starts to turn red, I probably need to take the fan off. 
Because it does have a limit. Holy cow. Does this get hot? Look, there's 300. Holy crap. Going through On there. Three, going, going through there, your bench would be. It would be plenty good. Yeah. Well, I don't think we're running out quite yet. What happens if I just put one in? Yeah, put one in. This one. It'll just start up and then start sucking. See, I think this would be the ultimate wood stove if you have kids around. It's cool to the touch. Yeah, it's, and right here, and even this is not going to burn you. Yeah, it's cool to the touch. Right. A kid could put this in without having to open a door once it started. Yeah. So what happened was during the live show, I had coals in here, but I didn't get another stick in in time. There is a grate to hold the wood up off the bottom of the stove so that the air can flow through it which means that when the coals fell through, they were not in contact with the wood that I did have in there, and so I had to restart it. Um, one concern I have is that this is hot. So I need to use something besides my fingers to lift it up and look at it. But I did restart it. It starts up again very quickly. And um, paper seems to work not so well. It seems to kind of block things, and, and it doesn't work so well. So. I think I'm going to use some of Danny and Wanda's Fat Pine next if I need to use another fire starter. The other thing is if you put in a, a log that takes up most of the space, the air cannot flow through well. It works better if you put in something that is going to allow air circulation that's smaller. And on top of that, I think the little log that was brought in was a little wet. It wasn't out in the shed. It was out in the fire pit. And so it had some rain on it. And so it did take a little longer to start it this time than it did last time. When we first started up last time, we used kindling, small pieces. We didn't have any logs, and it was definitely not wet. So it started back up again, though, just fine. Because the, the box is quite small, uh, you can't put a whole big log in there and it so it won't burn for a long time So either you need to have a bench for the air to circulate through for the heat to circulate through or you need to have a Constant way to feed fuel into the stove. So that's why Darwin is working on a pellet stove um, system as well With the ragged stove you need to make sure that you add more wood before the coals start to fall through It does need a chance to get started up again with the new fuel it doesn't have to be a lot of wood, but you need to make sure that you do keep a coal bed going if you want the stove to keep going. Everything on the stove is reclaimed. It was all made from scratch by Darwin over at the Honeydew Carpenter. If you want to learn some really amazing DIY skills, I would highly recommend going over and seeing them. So until the stove is up and functional and we know that the bench is going to wor work, I'm not wanting to bring the kids out yet. I want it to be really consistently warm without being too warm in the lofts at night. I want it to be functional. Um, the other thing we're aiming for is that there be no uh, ash, no not ash, no smoke leakage when it's transferring from the stove and down into the bench. We don't want it to be smoking and leaking. Uh, it's not healthy to be in a house that has a, a leaking uh, stove. You don't want that, that smoke in your lungs. And it damages your clothes. It just makes you stinky. So we're going to trial run this. Uh, it's supposed to go in. The um, vent is supposed to go in on Monday. So that'll be exciting. And um, at that point, uh, I, I need to be here a little bit more than that because we do have some goats having babies right now. And, but I'm excited. I'm excited to have the stove in. With insulating uh, more of it, it means that less heat comes out through the side. It never, it never really came out through this part. This part was always like this to, to be insulated. But this part is now insulated as well. So there's a, um, a thicker layer of insulation. It is warm, but it's not hot. That's hot. And so it is radiating some heat out into the room, but what we're really planning on is to have that bench be what is holding the most heat. So it, it's, it's definitely a, an experience and a, an experiment rather than a sure thing. Whenever you're doing something like this, it's going to be an experiment. And so if you're planning on doing something like this with your family, I would say always have safety be the first priority. 
Make sure that you're not in a, in a cabin that isn't warm enough. Make sure that you have all of your backups and everything in place so that everybody's safe and warm and you don't need to worry about that. Um, when we did this last time, it was summer when we first started experimenting with it and we had a different stove in here and we played with this one in its first um, uh, format, in its first uh, stage. We played with it in late summer, early fall and it didn't work quite right. So we were on to, back to the drawing board, went to Tulsa for the majority of the winter, and now we're here back in spring. But it's very cold in Idaho in spring. Um, we will still have freezing nights, we'll have freezing days, and we're gonna have snow, all that kind of thing. That's an Idaho spring. So it's still really important for us to have a working wood burning stove. And if it does work, then it's fantastic. But see and look, I mean, really look at it and see that it took a couple prototypes to get it right. If you're reinventing the wheel, you're reinventing the wheel. And that doesn't mean that like things that you would have purchased would always work 100% either. The nice thing is here, it's not an expensive setup. Darwin built it himself. And um, he's learned a lot along the way. I've learned a lot along the way. And it's, it's just a trial and error thing until we get it figured out. The reason we can't have a real cob rocket mass heater in here is because of the weight on the floor. We do not have a concrete pad. And so this plywood floor could not handle the weight of a full cob floor or cob uh, bench. This is very light. You can lift it up and take it with you. It's movable. And all it needs to do is hook into the bench. So we'll see how it works. And hopefully you're enjoying this. And uh, make sure to go check out our Facebook. If you like the Facebook Live, make sure to go check out our Etsy store. We do have our eBooks up. We have our spinning wheels and we have soap and um, hair oil recipes on there for you to enjoy and thank you for supporting our channel and we'll talk to you later